Hi, my name is Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. This Ultramic 384 kHz that we bought in 2017 for use in Echo and other experiments, we want to use again, and uh, here is the overall view. So this can record at uh, 384 kHz, so well into the ultrasonic, and it does it USB, and we connect that into a phone using this uh, USB to micro USB adapter, and we can record at that frequency, and that allows you to analyze sounds uh, up to 192 kilohertz uh, effectively on a computer. So uh, the reason this is not wholly suitable for the up-and-coming tests is that when you have something producing sound and that goes out into the environment, let's say you have a radiator in the environment, the sound hits it, it rings back at a, a, a different frequency. So you don't only get uh, the output sound, but you also get the echo sounds. Uh, obviously, labs and uh, industrial places are not well um, sound treated, unlike uh, this room where we have uh, sound absorbing materials on the wall um, so that it's uh, clearer for me to talk to you. Uh, in a typical lab like uh, uh, Suhas Rail Cars, uh, it's got a lot of other equipment in there. For instance, you've got power equipment, uh, all kinds of metallic objects, uh, fans, um, you know, air conditioning units and things that buzz and Power supplies, for instance, a lot of power supplies that you have for your phone, for instance, will be uh, singing in the ultrasonic. So now you can take a background uh, and that is one thing you can do uh, and then subtract the background. Uh, but, you know, your your overall quality of your, your signal is is not necessarily wholly reflecting the device that you're trying to test. Well, in the case of Echo, uh, we weren't able to get into the reaction vessels uh, when they were doing their work in any practical sense. Um, however, uh, in a, a test where we would be able to do that, um, uh, and it was, say, a liquid-based uh, uh, reactor, uh, then you might want something that is right there in with the action. So I thought to get a hydrophone uh, for some up-and-coming tests, and uh, I bought this... Uh, 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 kit and the link to where to get it uh, will be on uh, the uh, description of the video. So it's an environmental mod monitoring kit and it really is a kit. Now it was quite cheap, it was $40. Uh, unfortunately uh, because of the timing involved we had to uh, have an express delivery uh, and that meant uh, $87 on the delivery and then because it was over the import duty level then we had to pay import duty and go through the processing. Anyway, I've got that now and uh, it comes with a whole bunch of stuff, uh, some epoxy, uh, Loctite. Now there are instructables on the web where you can learn how to make a hydrophone um, but there wasn't time to reinvent the wheel and uh, still I have to build this. So it comes with a couple of nitrile gloves, uh, it comes with the uh, cable, um, and what else have we got in the bag? Um, it comes with some, well, obviously some pizza, piezos. Uh, let's see if we can get those. A uh, couple of uh, piezo transducers. Um, let's see if we can get that in focus. There we go. A couple of piezo transducers. Uh, some foam. And uh, it has uh, a piece of plumbing here. <laughs> and uh, another uh, sort of uh, grommet or, or whatever for the cable, I guess. And some insulating tape. So that is essentially, it's, it, there's not a lot in the kit. And I, I imagine it doesn't cost anywhere near $40. But it's all nicely done. The work is done for you. And it comes with an instruction manual, uh, which is quite detailed. I won't go into it because uh, it's the work. But I, what I will show you is that it uh, claims uh, that... Uh, with ordinary uh, equipment like a computer, uh, it can uh, produce uh, recordings of between 10 hertz and 15 kilohertz. Now, uh, Piezo can uh, record sounds up to 100 kilohertz, so I don't know whether this can. However, we have a, a little uh, adapter here for a phone. It's a Axigan USB a high quality audio adapter here. And again, we'll connect that with the uh, USB to uh, uh, micro USB adapter. And uh, this cable has a large uh, uh, audio connector on it. Um, I'm going to swap that out with this uh, stereo connection here. Um, and uh, I will then put that into here, into the microphone socket. And that will go into the phone. And you can see a picture here. And 
Uh, then there's some software called USB Audio Recording Pro, something like that, uh, which you get on the Play Store. And this enables us to record the audio at uh, 384 uh, kilohertz off this, and will be able to let us record up to uh, 96 kilohertz off uh, these pizzas. And so we should be able to get a nice, at least clean signal up to 15 kilohertz. So what this will allow us to do is, with our hydrophone, we'll actually be able to put it into the uh, processing chamber and get the uh, sound directly transported through the uh, water in there rather than listening to all of the rest of the noise in the laboratory. Uh, and so hopefully we'll get much higher quality data um, in this test. But we'll also have this in the background, which will provide backup and, and also um, for much higher frequencies as well. Now, there is a possibility we do have another end for this that was bought at the time that we might be able to uh, adapt the cable and put that on there and, and actually be able to record um, this at 384 kHz.